Flash floods in Pennsylvania, President Biden's new student loan forgiveness plan, and a changing of the guard at Wimbledon. There's a new king of Santa Claus. That's some of what we'll get to on The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Jeff Pierre. It's Monday, July 17th. Let's get you caught up for today's 7 Stories. Number one, flash flooding in Pennsylvania has left five people dead. A sudden deluge of rain flooded a road north of Philadelphia on Saturday. The current was strong enough to wash cars away. A baby and a toddler were missing after the storm. It followed more than a week of flooding and thunderstorms in the Northeast. Vermont and New York's Hudson Valley were hit especially hard. Farther south, a historic heat wave across the southwest reached its maximum intensity yesterday. Death Valley in California, which is infamous for its heat, hit 128 degrees. Extreme temperatures are forecast to shift east in the coming days. Number two, four people were killed in a shooting near Atlanta on Saturday. The shooting took place in Hampton, Georgia. It's a city of about 8,000 people, 25 miles southeast of downtown Atlanta. Three men and one woman were killed in the shooting. The 40-year-old gunman was killed yesterday after running away from police. Authorities said he died during a shootout that also left two officers injured. Number three. The Biden administration said it'll forgive $39 billion in student loans. The plan was announced Friday. It could help more than 800,000 borrowers. It's aimed at people who are enrolled in income-driven repayment plans. The Education Department said it will inform eligible borrowers that they qualify for forgiveness. Borrowers are likely to hear from their loan servicers in about a month that their loans have been discharged. This latest move came two weeks after the Supreme Court rejected a much broader plan from President Biden. That would have forgiven over $400 billion in federal student loan debt. Number four, Ukraine said it was behind an attack this morning on a key bridge in occupied Crimea. A Russian official said the roadway on the bridge was damaged. Ukraine said it used sea surface drones in the attack. This bridge is an important supply route for Russia's war in Ukraine. It was also the site of an explosion in October that required months of repairs. You can find live updates on this breaking story on our homepage. Number five. Actress, singer, and style icon Jane Birkin died yesterday at 76. Birkin was born in London, but settled in France, where she became a leader in French style in the 1960s and 70s. She was also known for her political activism. Paris fashion house Hermès created the Birkin bag in her honor in 1984. She had met the head of Hermès on a flight, and after her stuff spilled out of her own handbag, she sketched out a vision for a bigger one. The Birkin bag is now one of the most exclusive luxury items in the world. Number six. Djokovic is deposed. There's a new king of Sandakor. Carlos Alcaraz, who is only 20 years old, claimed his first Wimbledon championship yesterday. He defeated Novak Djokovic in the final. He's beaten a man who is virtually invincible on this court. He's the youngest man to win at Wimbledon since 18-year-old Boris Becker won it in 1986. It was Alcaraz's second Grand Slam title. He'll retain his world number one ranking. Djokovic had won the tournament seven times and was trying to tie Roger Federer's record of eight titles. On the women's side on Saturday, Marketa Vondrusova, who was 24, became the lowest ranked and first unseated woman to win Wimbledon, defeating Tunisia's Ons Jabeur. And at number seven, more employers are opting out of testing workers for marijuana. All but three states have legalized some form of marijuana, and 23 states plus D.C. allow recreational usage. So some companies have stopped testing their employees for THC or no longer see a positive test as a deal breaker, especially since it may just mean that they use the drug at home and not at work. Employers found that testing for THC was disqualifying good candidates for open roles, particularly among younger people, 
And to attract more workers, some companies are even advertising the fact that they don't drug test their employees. And just like that, you are all caught up. If you're liking the show, take a minute to give us a rating. And if you listen on Apple, you can leave the show a review and tell us what you think. We love hearing from listeners. I'm Jeff Pierre, and I will meet you back here tomorrow. Tomorrow.